your little Bob. But before we do, I want to just give them a little bit of history that they've never heard of. God worked in my life. But, you know, Paul said in Romans, the fourth chapter, the 21st verse, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. I believe every promise in this Bible that God is able to perform. But I was running from God. I wouldn't listen to what God was saying to me. I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to do what God wanted me to do. I didn't want him to go to church and sit back on the pew and be just like anybody else. I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to uh, pray for sick. I didn't think I could. But God kept dealing with me, kept dealing with me, and I kept just going on and finally I just started drifting out of church. I wouldn't go to church. I'm a pipe cutter by trade. I went to work one morning. I felt as good as anybody ever felt. Wasn't a pain in my body no more. At 8 o'clock, the machinist was fixing the change of pump. I had to break the unit, just a two inch unit. Brother Newton knows how big a two inch, inch unit is, and I'm very hard to break. I never did put my Range on it. I stooped over. My back popped twice and I fell. I was paralyzed. Had it been for uh, Gene Copeland and another man, they caught me. I would have got her real big. I would have fell into a pit. They caught me and they called the ambulance. They took me to the hospital. I was paralyzed. That happened at 8 o'clock. About 11 30, they called my wife, told her I was in the hospital. She come over, they run every kind of test they could run on me. They'd come in one day and say this is wrong with you. Next day they'd say this is wrong with you. Next day they'd have something else wrong with you. And but the fact was that I couldn't shake myself, I couldn't feed myself, I couldn't move, I couldn't turn over, I couldn't do anything. I was hurt. I laid that way for 20 days that I could not move. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. My wife brought my Bible over to me. I had a lot of time to think and study over it. I got a telephone call one evening. People would come by. They would pray with me. My pastor would come by. He'd pray with me. It didn't seem like that pain would ever ease. Nothing that gave me would ease the pain. It just there, just a steady pain. But one evening, Danny and my wife was over at the hospital. I got a telephone call. The preacher says, what are you doing laying up in that hospital? I began to I kind of hung off around, you know, I didn't want to tell him about running from God. I didn't have to tell him for he already know. But he says, I'm going to pray for you. He said, I want you to believe what the Bible says. The Bible says, if any two will touch it in one name, agree, it'll be done. He prayed for me. When I hung the phone up, I got up, I walked for the first time. I failed to touch of the Master's hand. That evening, my wife and daddy went on home. And it was not dark and I was not asleep. A lot of people might think, well, you're just telling something. But I'm not just telling you this. This is just as real as it happened to me. It's anything ever has happened. About 4 o'clock, it was a light just as big as a door come in my room. It was so bright, I could even feel the heat from the light. I felt them hands go under me and lift me up. I was floating. I wasn't even touching the bed. God spoke to me just as plain as I was speaking to you. He said, if you'll do what I call you, I hear you. He said, I want you to carry my word. I want you to warn the people that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Christ Jesus. I 
began to think, well, he said, I want you to lay hands on the sick and she have to I began to think, well, I can't, I can't preach, I can't do that. And I'm going to tell you something, I can't do it. But God is greater than I am. And he that within me. But when I said yes, God let me get out of that hospital and put a back brace on me. He let me go home. I began to walk, but I wouldn't tell nobody what God had told me for. I thought, man, I'm getting by this. I won't have to do none of that. I'm doing all right. I won't have to, I won't have to preach. I, I've done got by it now. I'm all right. But that uh, on a Monday, then they started board the yard, and I stooped over to pull that line more, and my back caught me again, just like that. And I was there it was. And when I went in the house, that voice come back and said, you haven't done what I told you to do. That was on the Monday, Francis carried me to the doctor on Friday, and he said, I'm going to put you in the hospital, and he said, I'm going to have to operate on you. He said, you'll never walk. You'll never be no better until you operate. I said, I'm not going to the hospital today. I'm going to be prayed for before I go in that hospital. I went on Sunday, and the preacher called me back when he came in before he ever preached. When I walked up the court, he said, God has shown me the vision of your back. I felt that begin to move in my back. My mother-in-law was in the service up there before I was at. I felt it when he shot out the top of my head. The next thing I know, I was laying on the floor and he was standing there right beside it. He kept me up from that day to this. I haven't had a pain. But if I hadn't said yes to God and obey God, I would have still been a purpose. I'd still be through that day. But what I'm saying, I'm fully persuaded that what God has promised us, that we can do. And I, I just want to get that testimony before I started to preach this morning that we can have whatsoever we want from God if we let him rule our lives. Hallelujah. I want you to turn with me to the in chapter Mark, I believe it is. Yeah, in chapter 11. For a certain, we'll start with the 25th verse. 